Maybe this should be an ongoing series, but I want to speculate more on what I think the next generation model for Tesla can be. We know that they're working on them. We know they got design studios and stuff, but let me preface the entire video by saying, yes, I understand. The biggest bottleneck with production of Tesla vehicles is batteries. They're trying to ramp up battery production as fast as they can. Yeah, I get that. It doesn't mean we can't talk about what they're doing afterwards once they ramp up battery production and once they're ready to start diversifying the lineup a little bit. So I recently did a video on the low range compact Tesla that a lot of people seem to like the idea of just because, you know, cheaper and a Tesla is cool. But another great YouTuber called Tech Forum brought up some great points in his video about the compact commuter Tesla saying that once you start having a large number of a smaller priced vehicle that can clog up superchargers a lot more, that can require a lot more mobile service for those vehicles, and you can grow way too fast and a lot of Model S and X owners already are kind of frustrated that tons of superchargers are getting packed with Model 3s and soon to be Model Ys. So basically, a compact commuter Tesla, there's its own set of disadvantages that go along with that. And that's why Rivian may have a decent advantage in the future, because at this point, we do not really see Tesla talking about much efforts to create some type of maintenance van like this, which has more applications than I think people realize. It's a lot more than just delivering packages. You know, you have ambulances, you have Tesla's own mobile service, which is oftentimes using vans from other brands, which you gotta admit that kind of looks bad. But then of course you have lots of contractors out there like plumbing or electrical people that have to have vans that they can walk in and have lots of their materials to work with and drive out to people to of course provide services for them. So it's a lot bigger than just delivery vans, though that is a huge market of, you know, Amazon Prime trucks delivering stuff to people, UPS locksmiths, you know, pool maintenance people, all types of businesses that could take a huge advantage to vehicles like this because of course they come with their own set of electrical benefits like much cheaper to maintain and you don't have to drive the thing to a gas station. Most of the time, there's exceptions, but most of the time commercial vehicles like this do not get to go home with the driver of that business. Typically, they have a warehouse somewhere that they could likely plug into, and given it's not the size of a semi-truck, you could probably get a decent amount of range with standard, you know, NEMA 1450 plugs. Overnight, just by plugging these things in, you have a full day of driving them around a city, and while it's probable they would require fairly large battery packs, which, again, bumps up with the main problem with Tesla's production right now is their constraint on batteries, but I think there's enough low local use for delivery vans like this that you could make a not crazy range version of it that could still sell pretty well. I think Tesla would have a distinct advantage in this department, not just because of their battery technology, but also because of the power consumption they're able to get on their motors. So we obviously know the big limitation right now is batteries, but having much more power efficient motors means that you could have fairly large vehicles that, okay, maybe they don't break 300 miles of range, maybe more something like 250. That would still cover a lot of day-to-day -day driving for a lot of those commercial vehicles that are just driving around town, they're picking up groceries or dropping off packages, and they don't really necessarily need to go great, great distances for deliveries. But but again, the uh, standard van market is a pretty big one. There's lots of different use cases, and I'm completely aware that there are some businesses and some commercial uses that would need the best range possible. But again, that's where Tesla would have that advantage. So in time, perhaps offering options that could easily reach over 300 miles, perhaps one day 400 if the company is willing to pay for it, because once you get that cost of ownership way, way down, less brake pad replacements, less oil changes, the benefit of regenerative braking, and of course charging almost always being cheaper than gasoline, I think brands and even small independent businesses that need vehicles like this would be willing to pay a lot up front, especially if since it's an electric vehicle, it could have some plugins on the inside so that they wouldn't have to bring around generators and plug into their own forms of electricity because similar to the Cybertruck, you know, they'll just have a big battery pack they can tap into. Since it's meant for commercial use, perhaps even having an option for a built-in air compressor, just like the Cybertruck, that depending on your commercial use may be really helpful to have in this type of workforce. So I brought up Rivian earlier because I do think the fact that Amazon wants a bunch of Rivian designed delivery vans may give them a significant advantage on the market over Tesla, and this is one of the reasons I think Rivian is being somewhat smart with their launch right now, is they see the market Tesla's going after, which is a lot of sedans and SUVs and kind of in that luxury department, whereas Rivian is definitely catering a lot more towards that outdoor adventure life. And the Cybertruck is kind of Tesla's response to that, but the fact that Rivian is partnering with Amazon to work on these delivery vans that are likely going to have decent range and be fairly practical for commercial use cases, that's something Tesla doesn't appear to be focusing too much on right now. Maybe businesses wouldn't be that interested in it, so that's perhaps why Tesla's not focusing on it right now. I'm sure the Model 3 and Model Y and later the Cybertruck are probably going to be huge cash cows, but once they start ramping 
ramping up battery production and they have to decide what our next model, what our next vehicle is going to be, going where the money is and catering towards those big businesses that are going to utilize these things, but not in a way that throttles your battery production so much like the Tesla semi truck does, maybe a really smart move given Rivian's already appearing to be investigating this type of industry. So not as exciting as the compact commuter because I know a ton of you out there just want cheapest Tesla possible. Make it small, make it bad range. I don't care. I just want the car. This one might make a lot more logistical sense for the company. But what do you guys think? Feel free to let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.